engineering uh, welcomes you all in the uh, today's online expert lecture i welcome our beloved principal dr narendra kanne sir our head of department dr s m mahajan sir all departments of uh, civil department of faculty and dear students so this uh, expert lecture is organized by bridge bit forum our uh, forum is constantly working for the overall development of the students by organizing a uh, technical expert lecture technical site visits uh, curricular extra curricular activities uh, through a forum so this is all about the forums which is working uh, for the overall development of the civil engineering department students now i just uh, uh, request to our principal sir to welcome our uh, today's uh, guest of uh, expert uh, sorry today's expert uh, mr uh, chandrasekhar memory uh, sir uh, uh, professor raikar Yes, I have already. I have yes, already. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes. once again, formally, I welcome you, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, it's our pleasure. It's our. We are really fortunate to have you uh, on behalf of Bajaj Institute of Technology and especially Civil Engineering Department. I'm really glad that you will be imparting uh, your expert session today. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation, and we look forward to hearing you. Welcome, welcome. You. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I, I just request to Professor W, sir, to give a brief introduction of today's uh, uh, distinguished uh, expert to our all participants. Professor W, sir. Thank you very much, Professor Ravikar. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are clearly audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kane, sir. Uh, uh, it gives me immense pleasure and feel proud to introduce today's guest speaker, Mr. Chandrasekhar Vemuri. who is currently working as technical director ports and marine marine structures jacobs okay i hope uh, the students will definitely google and know about jacobs what exactly it is so mr chandrasekhar has got 28 years of experience design experience design of civil uh, structures out of which 22 years of practical design of major maritime structures waterfront development marinas container terminals general cargo berths naval base dry dock liquid and dry bulk terminals industrial residential and commercial structures then port infrastructure design management project management of complex ports including geotechnical highways electrical mechanical and communication design analysis and design of open piled structures now the most interesting part actually his this introduction uh, will continue for at least one hour if i <laughs> go on but i quickly move on to the human part i mean uh, he has been my best friend and we shared good memories and uh, the the hobbies yes he has written i would like to definitely uh, talk about the uh, hobbies because students uh, youngsters will be more interested so he is very much interested in uh, sports any kind of sports watching playing cricket he has written but he uh, he he plays all the games and mr chandrasekhar uh, let me tell you our dr kane sir also is very very interested in uh, uh, in playing all the games uh, tt and badminton so no one can beat him on campus and uh, moreover uh, moreover chandrasekhar uh, dr kane is very good singer and sometimes if we really uh, meet in person uh, you will uh, you will enjoy his uh, music but uh, uh, but one more thing uh, uh, for other participants i would like to tell you chandrasekhar is also a good singer uh, he plays flute and he mesmerizes he hypnotizes everyone with his flute and uh, uh, and we 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 really had fun you know we were uh, roommates when we were uh, working for the diploma then uh, his uh, also hobby is bollywood tollywood hollywood dancing you know all <laughs> and uh, uh, travel and tourism trekking reading reading books also see actually i had developed uh, interest because of him only sydney chandler uh, sydney sheldon and jeffrey archer you remember chandra we had almost completed uh, around 5 uh, to 6 uh, uh, such uh, novels okay for me it was uh, new but because of chandra i have uh, started reading the novels jeffrey archer uh, our fa most favorite is matter of honor a matter of honor you remember chandrasekhar and we yeah, yeah, we, we well. love those we love those characters you know romano and uh, and the, i have forgotten the <laughs> protagonist uh, i do yeah. you remember the protagonist name i have forgotten i have forgotten 
I forgot. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so I, 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 it, it, it is a, a proud moment for me. I really welcome, welcome Chandra Shekhar. I think all of you are, all of us, uh, the participants are waiting for your lecture. Okay. And he is a very good teacher. You know, he's a very good teacher. He is my mentor. He is my guru. He has developed spark and interest uh, uh, about the structural engineering. And uh, then he he created the base and foundation. And later on, of course, uh, then I have developed myself. And but he has been always constantly uh, with me. So um, so now I hand over it to uh, Professor Ravikar, and uh, uh, we can start the actual lecture. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, sorry. Chandrasekhar sir, uh, you can start uh, uh, your session. Okay. Um, thank you all for saying those kind words and respective principal, all the faculty and dear students. Um, I'm very much honored to get this opportunity to give this lecture on um, maritime structures. Uh, so welcome and good afternoon. Uh, I'll try to share my screen now. Yes. Uh, please let me know if you can see. Uh, not it, sir. Uh, should be coming shortly. Yes, sir. Yes. Visible, sir. Visible. Okay. I'll start the slideshow. Sorry. Is it? Is it visible now? Yes, it is clearly visible, sir. Okay. So uh, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope um, I will try and keep it interesting and not make you guys sleep um, now that you had lunch. So um, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions uh, during the presentation or at the end of the presentation. Um, the topic is introduction to maritime structures. Um, to me uh, personally, it's a very challenging and interesting subject. I hope uh, you also find it interesting. Um, this presentation uh, includes uh, basically, you know, uh, uh, a culture of care moment, uh, a very quick introduction to sea cargo and transportation industry. Then I will tell you what are marine structures, uh, just give you an introduction about it. What are the examples of maritime structures? Uh, what are the basic terms used in uh, maritime structures? Uh, what are the applications? And then give you some examples. And if time permits, uh, given uh, um, that you know we have an hour or so, uh, and if time permits, I will take you through a case study. And I would also like to introduce you about uh, what are the career opportunities and uh, follow it with the questions. Uh, please do not hesitate to stop me anytime. Um, ideally, I would like the questions at the end, but it's not compulsory. Uh, just It is just to keep the smooth flow of the presentation. That's all. Um, to start with culture of care moment, you know, we all communicate with everyone in our life. You are talking to your friend, family, your professor, or your um, student, whoever. You know, proper communication matters. Whatever we want to communicate, it has to be very clear and straightforward. Uh, an example of miscommunication is shown in this uh, slide where the intent was something and what actually is uh, delivered is something different. So we all have good intentions. None of us would like to you know, convey something bad or anything or hurt others. But having good intentions is just not enough. We have to convey them uh, properly. So um, this is very important in life because miscommunication can create lots of troubles uh, in your life, as both personal as well as professional life. So uh, let us, all of us, aim to communicate properly. Uh, to summarize, what is the aim of this presentation? You know, my first aim is to make sure you don't sleep. Uh, that is my first thing. And then um, keeping in mind um, and understanding that students from second year to final year are um, watching this presentation. I try to keep this at a very basic level so that everybody can understand and capture the essence of this presentation. So this aims at creating basic awareness of maritime structures. I hope I will be able to ignite some interest in all of you. Um, then what are the possible career opportunities for uh, students as well as some of the young and working professionals? 
uh, please note that all the content shall be treated as informal uh, because if i am sharing any content from any project actually we are supposed to take permission from the organization so i haven't taken any information which i cannot share uh, most of the information is taken from the internet uh, but some information for case studies i have taken with permission from the company so um, i hope you find it interesting uh, let me start with uh, you know a very quick introduction about sea cargo and transportation industry see we all need the goods to move around you know every day in and day out you need to move goods from one place to the other whether it is by land or by air or by sea so why sea cargo and transportation industry is so important because more than 80 percent of the goods are transported by sea and this is where we civil engineers come into picture you know if there is transportation industry we are there because we make it possible you know somebody does the manufacturing but we are the ones who make it possible to reach people so a civil engineer should be very proud of what he is doing goods are transported by sea and it is one of the most economical way of transporting because you also can do large quantities of transport and it is a carbon efficient way of uh, transportation however there are some disadvantages it is the transportation process is slow because ships move at a um, limited speed and one other drawback is that if you want to move small quantities the price is not sustainable so uh, large quantities of transport it's very efficient and what are the main goods transport uh, some of the goods are listed here we have oil lng the cooking gas we use every day in our home livestock grains food vehicles bulk cargo like minerals ores raw materials and then containers and many more this is only a small list of it and if you can see the map which is on the right hand top side at sea in a real time these are the just footprints of the ships which are moving around the world so you can imagine the amount of cargo being transferred and uh, given below is the routes of the vessels which are moving around carrying those essential or uh, important goods so sea cargo is very important and this sea cargo transfer brings us civil engineers into picture because like to fly a plane you need an airport to take off and you need an airport to land similarly to move a ship you need a place to start the ship to park it and then when you take the ship you need a place again to anchor it or move it or to park it again and then to allow goods to be offloaded and uploaded so those structures which we design for uploading offloading to facilitate ships to be parked basically i'm calling it parking but basically the definition is slightly different uh, so the, they they are the maritime structures there are different kinds we will go forward uh, and we'll see more as we move forward uh, i hope this gives uh, how much important maritime structures play in our every day to day life okay what um, it's a huge uh, department of engineering i would say it's very difficult to capture everything in this uh, time but however let us say um, i'll just show some examples on the screen uh, just to check uh, is everyone able to listen me clearly and see the presentation yes sir yes sir okay so i have taken some examples see structures which come into contact with sea in some form of the other rivers creeks and ponds in very simple term you can call them as maritime structures uh, some of the examples uh, we know the proud marine drive you know the queen's necklace in mumbai i spent uh, many evenings there walking around so marine drive the beach it's protected by marine structures the recent bandra early sea link it's a bridge but it is again a marine structures because it has an interaction with the sea you need to be able to construct all those pillars and all those supporting structures in the sea then the jawaharlal nehru port trust in navi mumbai um, i'm sure some of you are familiar noticeably or unnoticeably we all spent we all might have visited all these places but we have never noticed you know what i want you to do is after we finish this lecture next time whenever you visit any of these places look at them from a civil engineering point of view look at them as a civil engineer you know then you will find lots of things interesting for example 
we all go sometimes on our vacation we go and stay in our resorts and enjoy the resorts for the one which i have shown on the maldives you see the water villas there okay that's a marine structure there you know you come into picture there then i also shown one example of a resort in kerala uh, a small swimming pool next to a lake or a river around with again water homes there so these are some of the quick examples and very well known examples of maritime structures uh then i'll continue a few more uh, which are quite interesting i hope you know and you heard about the seven star hotel which is called as burj al arab in dubai i am assuming that some of you might have visited dubai um, and so this is a seven star hotel um, built um, near the beach of dubai you can see land to the hotel connection so this is again a marine structures then um atlantis again this is uh, because i am from dubai uh, i have taken more examples from uh, united arab emirates um, so uh, so obviously i will be giving more examples from this part of the world atlantis is like uh, one of the man made island and it is on the edge of the land built uh, artificially made island structure uh, palm island which is an man made island uh, by reclamation of uh, material in the sea and then developing an island Shahrukh Khan has a villa in the here, and many Bollywood stars own villas and uh, flats in this part of the world, Palm Island. Then uh, the other example is an industrial port in Thailand. Uh, just an example. So how a port looks like, you know, what is it is. We will deal with it more as we go forward. But this should give a fair idea of you know maritime structures. Obviously, this doesn't cover everything, but they cover some of the examples. Uh, if you heard about pleasure uh, development or waterfront development where people go for pleasure uh, you can see what we call as dubai marina again this is in dubai so uh, people who have their own boats you know uh, yachts boats who go for pleasure drive so this is a marina which is built within the dubai it's a beautiful place this marina is designed by uh, jacobs or halcrow um, since 1990 or so um, i was part of some of the elements of the design of this structure then uh, one more interesting uh, example is what we call as dubai water canal here on the right side you see a google extracted map image where from the arabian ocean you can see the sea water peeping inside the land and uh, it forms a creek so what happened is that creek was not completely uh, inside the dubai it was only part the remaining part was excavated and was made a complete canal so that dubai becomes an island this is like new york so this is one of the maritime structures dubai water canal i was the lead engineer for the marine structures of this particular project uh then i would like to introduce you okay we are talking about maritime structures maritime structures and all okay what are some of the terminologies we use nowadays we use a lot of shortcuts a lot of uh, terms and all so as as i go forward in the presentation i would like to introduce you to some of the key terms uh, which are used um if you go one by one i'll just give a very quick introduction and also we'll uh, we'll watch them more tide levels tide bar breakwater key wall which is actually pronounced as key wall uh, then there are terms called as dredging reclamation berthing mooring then there are additional terms bollards fenders yard navigation downtime what is a jetty what is a port what is a marina and what are vessels and what is metocean so um i will try to introduce you um these are some of the main terms so uh, i have taken an example of a typical port um so how does a port look like this is one of the typical ports in the middle east um so you can see on the <coughs> sorry on the right hand so ports are normally built which are near shore facing sea or rivers so these ports have to be protected from sea waves see water currents and floods uh, happening because of tsunamis and other events so you need to develop a port or a land structure which is protected against waves so the protecting structures are made of different materials so we basically call them as breakwaters so on the right side you can see this is main breakwater and then this is lee breakwater because if the mainly predominant waves are coming from one side the obstruction construction uh, structure you call it as a main breakwater and then the lee breakwater and then 
there are facilities you can see some of the vessels which are parked here so there are facilities all along the land side and yard side facility we call them as yard side facilities because they are the ones which are used for storage and movement of the cargo uh, then for ships to come and you can see here there are some ships here which is parked there is a vessel here which is parked so these type of structures which are abutting the land they are called as key walls or wharfs okay uh, it is a basically a retaining structure which has land on one side and water or sea on the other side then the whole water part of this port where ships are moving around it is called as port or harbor basin you can call it as then if you reclaim a land you dump out naturally some soil and then you develop a platform it is called as reclamation reclamation work then you have a structure which is uh, supported on piles where it is allowing some uh, berthing of vessels it is called a jetty uh, see many times people talk what is a jetty what is a berth what is a key wall a key wall or wharf is a structure which is parallel to the land which has a backfill behind whereas a jetty is generally built perpendicular from the land it has piles or some other structures but it is for example this one is called a jetty or a pier because you are running it perpendicular to the land and it is supported on piles or it is supported on some other foundation structures and it is not directly connected to land it is connected to land by means of some structural supporting system and they are perpendicular to the beach whereas a key wall or wharf is connected to the land uh, we have ports which are for commercial ports and industrial ports we also have some fishery harbors which will enable you know people to use these fishery harbor for catching fish um, that's again a huge industry uh and the entrance from where the ships enter the port they are called it is called as a port entrance and in order to create this you know each ship it needs certain water depth you know the depth of water maybe 2 meters 3 meters 15 meters the depth of water may not be adequate everywhere so in that case what you do you have to excavate an excavation on the land is called as normal excavation whereas an excavation in sea is called as dredging uh then some of the other terms used in the maritime industry what in the left side you can see what we call as a navigation simulation here the this shows a typical simulation study carried out on how a vessel or a ship is brought inside a port and then parked so people do computer analysis and specialized pilots and ex pilots when i say pilot a ship pilot okay uh, pilots they do study of how to bring a vessel inside a port how to maneuver it where to turn it and how to rotate it and bring it and park it it's again a very um, different science completely needs specialized software where you model the water you model the land you model the waves you model the current you model the dynamics of the uh, ships dynamics of the wind and exposed area of the vessels and how you bring it how you turn it and how you park it you know it is called as the parking is called as mooring so this is called as a typical navigation simulation this is an again a separate expertise within the maritime structures then one more aspect is mooring analysis where you can see a ship which is parked or anchored parking in sea is termed as mooring okay so i will henceforth talk it as a mooring so how you bring a ship how you anchor it you use specialized ropes and wires to anchor it to some fixed platform structures so some of the structures are called as loading platform where you connect some of the ropes because the aim is that when you park the ship it doesn't move it you cannot arrest the movement 100% but if it moves too much then you can't do the operations so this is mooring analysis this is one more term and the most important terms uh, one of the most important terms used is about the tidal data sea water level keeps varying because of the gravitational attraction from the moon plus wind and other effects so we all know that you know tide goes up and down every day once i went to alibag beach uh, expecting to have lots of fun but i didn't check the tide data of uh, that particular day and what happened when i went to the beach the water has receded maybe 2 kilometers inside so i was absolutely left with mud to play no no water and all so when we go to visit beaches and marine structures make sure you have a look at the tide bar and understand today whether it is a high tide or low tide that is high water level or low water level and then uh, so the water level keeps changing in uae the water level fluctuations are 2 to 3 meters and you will be surprised to know in india and in some places like gujarat the water level changes 8 to 10 meters so imagine 
the amount of engineering you have to do to counter those changes in the water levels. And uh, we face a lot of cyclones also in India through Indian Ocean, whereas Arabian Sea is known to be relatively calm sea here. So tidal data is very important in uh, design and analysis of marine structures, maritime structures. Some small key terms used, again, they are shown on the right side, what we call as a fender here. It is a rubber material where when your ship comes and abuts again is the structure, the ship hull is made of special material. We don't want ship to hit this structure and then structure will collapse, you know, damage. So for cushioning, you put some rubber fenders, it is called as a fender. Then when you tie the ship ropes to fix its structure, called they are called as bullards. It is like a steel element which is anchored, bolted into the concrete where you tie the ropes so that ship won't move. The top level of the structure, like what is the topmost level of a marine structure or a maritime structure is called as cope level. When you say cope level, that is the highest point on the landward side. So with this, some of the basic terms of maritime structures which are used are introduced. Then we'll go to the next one, which is called as uh, application of maritime structures. What are the various applications? You know, obviously, as I told earlier, when vessels come onto the port, we need berthing and mooring facilities. That is like the parking facilities for the ports and harbors. Then we need inland waterways and canal edge structures. Like we have canals and inland waterfront development. Then dry docks and ship lift facilities. I will show you examples as I go forward. These are the facilities where you bring ships and you know you have to you have to ground the ship, like how you ground a plane. You have to ground the ship and then bring it away from the water to carry out maintenance and repairs. They are called as dry docks and shiplift facilities. Then unloading and loading platforms where you use material, use platforms which are built in the sea for loading of the materials. Then obviously we have flood protection works, protection from tsunami, cyclone, other events where we have to protect land, we have to protect our beaches, we have to protect our people. Then product carrying stru support structures where you carry you know various facilities through in a jetty uh, some of those products are liquid products some of them are dry products some of them are bulk and then the other one is offshore marine structures where they are the ones where you know we use for exploration of oil drilling rigs um, there are some of the examples and also for power generation we use windmills in the offshore okay Examples here, berthing and mooring facilities in ports and harbors. You can see a vessel. See, in, in marine field, you call ship as a vessel. You know, That is the general term used. Even if it is a small boat or a big boat, the technical term used is, is a vessel. So how it is moved, you can see a mooring ropes, wires, specially connected and anchored. Um, an example on the right side is a LNG facility where how the vessels are berthed and how they are moored, you know, showing the anchoring system. This is like ports and harbor, the facilities for mooring. Then inland waterways and canals. You can see the canal for the Dubai Water Canal, which is under construction here. Um, so construction of the canals. And then see when we do marine structures or maritime structures as part of it, we also have to do some associated other structures because it's a complete civil engineering exercise. So you have a canal, but at the same time, you should be able to cross the canal. So then you have to come and do a bridge across the canal. So on the screen, you see are two very interesting structures. One is an arc bridge and other one, we call it as a helix bridge where the bridge shape is changing rapidly as it goes from one side to the other side. Both these structures are designed by Jacobs. And uh, this is a Dubai water canal. I was part of the marine structures team. And then the those bridges which are designed, which are successfully running are attracted a lot of interest from uh, various clients. Uh, if anybody visits Dubai, and if anybody is interested in structures, not only in marine structures, I would definitely recommend them to go and see these special structures. They're quite intriguing and challenging. Then I spoke about dry docks and ship lift facilities where um, on the right side is a typical dry dock uh, where you are bringing ship into a port and then you empty on the land side and then you pull it out, empty it, dry and then use for repairing maintenance. So these, these are called as dry docks and shipwreck facilities, some places where you have to bring it and dry the, uh, dry the structure and some places you might have to lift it from the water and take it further on the land. So they are shipwreck facilities. 
and then loading and unloading platforms uh, here you can see a typical what we call as a ship unloader or a ship loader where the material is transferred from the land to this ship unloader by conveyor system using that conveyor system that material is loaded onto the ship so these are loading and unloading platform structures then product carrying structures where we carry liquid products through pipelines and they are carried from the land to sea where they meet ship and then they are loaded onto the ship uh, there are two way one is we load the ship from the land and the other way is we take from the ship and take it towards the land for storage examples are lng oil and gas um, crude oil gasoline petroleum products then the other one is about the flood protection works as i spoke on the left side is a typical uh, flood protection system with a gate raised to allow water inside so when we have to lock it uh, for protection that gate can be dropped down on the right side the right side is a former land as i said again these particular interior villas and structures which are built on these uh, leaves you know they are protected by the outer structure which is called as a breakwater the atlantis is constructed here there is also a cruise terminal here which we finished recently uh, and this is a typical breakwater the breakwater which is on the outer side of the atlantis this this is a, this is a typical cross section showing the rock then um, the offshore marine structures where oil rigs where you use them for exploration of uh, materials and minerals inside the uh, water inside the oceans okay <coughs> i'll continue with some additional examples uh, just i am just checking one more time i hope i have not lost the internet connection everybody can hear me yes sir okay thank yes, you uh, here some typical structures i will introduce you uh, where how uh, marine structures will look like uh, the example on the left side is what we call as a khalifa port in abu dhabi it's one of the major uh, port um, for containers sectors um, we were involved in the complete design of this port structure right from 2007 till now and the structure on the right side is called as a mass concrete block work key wall as i said we pronounce key as k u i key wall structure where you can see the berthing structure is a retaining wall made of mass concrete blocks the height of this structure is nearly uh, 20 meters which means nearly a g plus 6 story building uh, so we have to retain all those uh, backfill and the concrete uh, strength and stability needs to be checked for wind wave moving berthing forces and such are loadings and live loads and this is the sea water um, so the depth required will depend on the depth of the ship which is carrying the cargo other type is what we call as reinforced concrete caisson structures um, the one on the left hand shows a typical caisson which is manufactured or fabricated in a yard and then it is towed into the sea and then installed these caisson structures are in the range of uh there are incidences where we have 1000 tons to 2000 tons weighing cage and structures and they are floated and then installed offshore uh, the right side we have a typical cross section uh, how these cage and structures are built and installed then uh, we have what we call a cellular sheet pile coffer dam structures where we use steel sheet piles or steel sheets to form circular structures um uh, they can be used for you know uh, for berthing or mooring facilities or they can use for reclamation and they can also be used for protection of the marine uh, facilities uh, against wind wave and current actions then uh, one more type what we call as a sheet piled combi wall structure it is um, i hope you heard about uh, sheet piles which are steel materials and then they, it's basically a retaining wall structure see ports and harbors mostly you will see retaining structures because they are built very close to the land and we need land on the backfill side to facilitate movement and storage and placement of the goods and on the sea side we have ship so mostly you will find retaining wall structures of different types their design and the challenges vary with conditions from place to place uh, on the right side you see the one which is under construction uh, the one which is already built which is already functioning whereas the extension is happening here and uh, some other examples of um, maritime structures you can see a dry dock which is in france uh, a terminal at jebel ali dubai um, you can see the number of container cranes which are installed so these this port is huge it has nearly maybe 20 30 cranes on the screen itself in one cross section that means you can imagine the amount of cargo being imported or exported 
typical section of a coffer dam uh, and the diaphragm wall, which is uh, quite extensively used in India. You know, a diaphragm wall is a marine structure which is typically used in India, whereas in Dubai it is a mass concrete block work wall, which I have shown earlier. Then again, an anchored sheet pile retaining wall with a steel sheet piles tied back by a system of steel um, high strength rods and anchored back embedded. It also has a landside piling structure to facilitate the installation of huge cargo cranes and it is backfilled. Uh, then the other one is the piles and jetty structures where you know you, you run perpendicular to the land and you installed steel or concrete piles, pile caps, and then you install some girders on the top. And then uh, these structures are used for, again, berthing and mooring facilities. This is one of the examples of an open pile structure. Uh, then for flood defense, the Palmer land, uh, this I have explained to you earlier. And this is one of a typical port, you know, where you, you when you see, you will be thinking, why this is in particular odd shape, you know, this particular structure. It is because the wave climate is studied and to protect the harbor from the waves and currents, water currents, this is the best possible direction which is uh, designed. So that is how you can see these odd shaped structures. Now I come to um, a case study, an example. I just would, I would like to ask uh, how I'm doing with timing with respect to how much time do we have? Uh, so near about 25 minutes. Okay, 25 minutes left. Okay, I will try to run quickly through uh, one of the case studies of uh, a project which um, I was part of the team and I led the marine structures design for this particular project. Uh, this is a port called a Sucker Port Expansion uh, case study. The project is located in one of the um, one of the places called as Ras Al Khaimah, which is uh, part of the United Arab Emirates. You can see on the right side um, the location of the port, and you can see that the port is on this side where it is exposed to open sea. Um, for the enlarged pictures and the typical layout of the port on the back, this highlighted rectangular portion here. This is the portion where they wanted to expand. So the port is opened in 1977, designed originally by Jacobs. Jacobs are originally um, a company called as Halcro. You might have heard about that name. It's a British company. Uh, and Halcro has been purchased recently by a US-based company called as CH2M Hill in 2013. And then we are further again purchased by Jacobs. So it's like I've changed three companies without changing any company. So this is originally designed by Hall Crow. So this port, it's a major bulk handling port. It has variety of bulk cargoes. What are the bulk materials transferred or transported here is aggregate, clinker and limestone and port also handles liquid bulk. Uh, so this gives a typical layout of the port and so you can see here some of the ships birthed and moved here. This port has typically 12 number of each berth means a parking space for each boat is called as a berth. Typically, this has 12 number of berths. Uh, depending on the water depth, we call it as a deep water port or a shallow water port. The dredge depth, that means the minimum water depth available. Uh, the minimum depth of the water available is 12.2 uh, meters at low water. So they have decided to do the expansion of the port here. And they wanted to do the design here for minus 18. That means instead of 12.2 here, they, they inferred that ships, much bigger ships are coming. So with 12, 12 and a half meters depth, this is not adequate to bring the ship in. So then what we do, we find a place on the outside of the port where we can dredge or excavate below the sea and bring ships where the dredging level is to minus 18. So you are nearly 18 meters into the sea. And when, once you do the dredging, you get a lot of material. So that material will be used for reclamation here, for creation of the land. So um, this is a typical aerial view of the port. Um, it shows some of the existing breakwaters, the typical cross sections. Uh, I wouldn't go into too much details now because of lack of time. And then this is the present layout of the port and this is the proposed expansion on the uh, seaside. So our scope of work was doing a concept stage design, doing a cost estimate, Obviously, we have to tell the client if they have to do this expansion. Okay, what does it mean to them? You know, in terms of what are various options? When you go to buy a TV, you look at various types of televisions available and what are the features available and what is the price and what are the advantages and disadvantages. Similarly, when we go into the maritime industry or any industry as for that matter, first, we have to do initially a concept study, you know, a very high level study where we say, oh, you want to build a bridge here or you want to build a dam here. 
okay you can build it the layout can be type a type b if you are using concrete or you're using steel or you're using timber okay this is going to be the cost however if you have to build this this is the technology available locally or you have to build a tunnel underground 20 meters below the ground then you need a special tunnel boring machine maybe it is not available you might have to get the tunnel machine from outside so the construction techniques the cost the possibilities uh, the skilled labor and the equipment available all those things have to be considered when we are designing a structure so uh, we started with the concept design we prepared a summary of cost for various options we have prepared advantages and disadvantages of the various options for the both ski wall structures and then we have provided conclusions and recommendations um, unfortunately i cannot go into all those details uh, but what i can tell you what are the key parameters affecting the choice of a particular key wall um, robustness durability is of prime importance and then as far as possible you you try to minimize the maintenance of course it has to be cost effective within the budget of the client it should have some flexibility for future expansion like one of our old television sets we can't convert them into smart tvs anymore so what do we do now with the technology everything is smart tv now so we go and get google chrome google chromecast and then attach that to our earlier tvs and then we convert into smart tv so that means there is some flexibility which is introduced there to convert structure from one particular type or one particular feature to enhance the features in the same way when i say flexibility any structure you design usually you, you need to have some flexibility you build your house tomorrow you want to add one more floor on the top you know so you can do that only you had some flexibility in your foundation design so flexibility is very important then as a civil engineer if i do any design and when the contract is awarded the contractor will come and say oh by the way i cannot build this you know i cannot construct this because the way you assumed is too difficult i can't build this or i take another 10 years to do this so the construction technique we give should be proven as far as possible schedule has to be within the uh, limits like there are commitments given to clients and uh, stakeholders so if you say you are building a facility in two years or you are building in five years you have to meet the schedule and so if i come out with a schedule which will be four years economical but doesn't meet client requirements so that option is um rejected so we have to come out with the construction technique we have to come out with a schedule and uh, which will meet the client requirements he has to give the keys to the people if you if you are, if i'm doing a water villas i should be able to hand over the water villas full um, resort to the resort operators after two years so if i tell them i'll give them after four years and i'll tell it is going to cost less then that doesn't work and last but not the least is the material and materials used in the procurement the construction materials you use should be as far as possible locally available because if they are international then procuring them will take time that will add to your schedule and they are expensive also for import uh, so materials and procurement they go together so these are some of the features and coming into the structural side one of the biggest challenges we face is this particular berth as i show you earlier it is exposed to waves because it is in open sea the earlier one was a protected harbor i'll just go back to show you that you see all these both structures inside they were all protected by these breakwaters here but the new development which is coming on the outside of the harbor it is exposed directly to sea so it is subjected to waves so a maximum wave height more than 8 meters 8 meters wave height is nearly three stories you know you can imagine the challenges to do the structure design so when a wave hits a structure it can cause a lot of damage you know and the damages can be it can overturn it can slide it can cause local collapse it can cause foundation collapse it can cause damage on the land side the water can overtop and enter towards the land side and cause problems with the land side works resorts where people will be scared if the water enter, enters on the land side slippery surfaces movement of the vehicle and problems um without going into the detail the effect of wave loading on a structure is shown here uh, it's one of the methods called a sane flow method where what is the effect of the waves on the structure is to overturn it to pull it towards the sea or to push it towards the land so you can see the effect of sea waves uh, just an example given here if they are not properly 
say i wouldn't say stopped if they are not properly mitigated so these are the sort of effects you can get you can get scour or erosion in front of structures you can get the structures to overturn and slide damages the durability will get affected see sea water has um, you know sea water is severe in affecting the structures in terms of especially the reinforcement and structural steel work where chloride attack is quite severe and causes corrosion and deterioration of the structure it's quite rapid and in the middle east the seas are um, say extremely corrosive um, it affects the strength the sea waves it also poses problems for functional difficulties and it also poses problems for the downtime of a vessel it's a downtime is a word which i have not introduced you earlier when i say downtime it is actually a time where you cannot actually bring the ship inside or take the ship outside or if the ship is inside you cannot actually load or unload No, in literary terms, not the actual definition, not the book definition, but the downtime is a time where the port is no more efficient. I can't use it for the services which are intended for. So, when we are designing maritime structures, we have to take care of the waves, current, and the water levels and the adverse effects they pose. So, it's a quite a challenging field. You know, if you if you are one who takes challenges, then yes, this is the field, and i will explain the opportunities of uh, of opportunities uh, later uh, this is a typical drawing showing now how how does a wave travel you know a wave travels um what we call uh, when a wave passes a certain point uh, the crest of the wave passes a certain point um for two successive crests to pass one point is called as wave period or wave time and uh, the wave travels with its crest and troughs so we have in this project a one in one year wave loading of nearly 5 meters whereas one in 100 year so when you design structures you design them with a return period like what do you do you do for every day wind or you do maybe there is a cyclone you know the cyclone doesn't come happen every day there is a tsunami again that doesn't happen every day so what we do is we are we assume certain time period so one in 100 years what are the most probable events which can happen and take one of the worst of those events and do the structure design it is same for bridges or it is same for any other buildings or any other structures because you have to design the structure considering certain design life and certain design event for example for seismic events we assume that what is the maximum earthquake that can happen in 475 years or 1000 years or for some oil and gas facilities you even go up to 2500 years so um this is the type of wave loading and how the waves travel and interact so options considered were reinforced concrete cation wall which i have shown you earlier cellular steel pile steel cofferdam wall a mass concrete block work wall and sheet piled combi wall these were the options which are considered priced evaluated advantages and disadvantages given the final option chosen was a mass concrete block work wall here and the key features are given here where you have mass concrete blocks all the way from here to here no reinforcement at all absolutely whereas only the capping or the top is ha having some reinforcement the dredge level is minus 18 there is some score protection here there are fenders bollards and all you see here see one other important aspect which is rapidly gaining importance otherwise also is about sustainability any structure we do we have to have an eye on the sustainability aspects because while we are taking care of the present we also take care of our future so structures when we are designing the maintenance cost the sustainability all those things have to be looked after marine structures uh, the most of the materials used are sustainable because we try mostly use rock which is a naturally occurring material so we do lots of sustainable structures design uh, why did we choose the mass concrete block work wall because it is robust strong it's a proven construction method in uae it has minimum maintenance all the materials are locally available and rock is the major construction material as i just said now there is plenty of uh, rock available within uae because the mountains and all it's a and the existing structures are also of mass concrete one very important thing which we learned during the design of this structure is when we presented the steel concrete and other options we had a chance to meet uh, one of the uh, port uh, directors and he mentioned that so we gave option a option b option c and said that okay option b is good but you have to import material from europe the steel work he said no no i am not interested in uh, paying money to europe i want to use local available material and the money goes into the local market and local people will get employment so these socio economic aspects also need to be taken into consideration 
Uh, current status of this project is it's completed and it is operating fully functional. Our client was Sakaput Authority. The contractor for the project was BAM International. We were the marine consultants, Hall Crew Jacobs. Uh, the project is now running successfully. I'll come to the final ones, which are the most interesting ones for all the students here about the carries. You know, okay. If you liked what you have seen so far, and if you would like to pursue your career further, what are the steps? Um, okay, I'm summarizing them in very brief. What is the educational qualification required to be a maritime structures engineer or maritime engineer? You know, basically, you have bachelor's degree in civil engineering, you're fine. You can pursue career with just only with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. You don't have to do anything else. You have to join a company, pursue them, convince them to give a chance to you, and then get some experience and work. And then the next step is you get a master's degree in marine structures. Um, our master's degree in structures is good enough. Uh, master's degree in geotechnical, uh, coastal engineering, or ocean engineering is, again, very good. Uh, because I am not in India, maybe some of your professors may be able to answer you uh, more on these questions. But some of the institutions which are offering marine structures, I know uh, NIT in Suratkal, Karnataka, it offers master's degree in marine structures, a beautiful um, college and a wonderful core curriculum. Then I know that IIT Chennai offers um, offshore structures uh, where people go more into the design of oil rigs and other offshore types of structures. There are international universities like Delft, Netherlands. Then there are universities in United Kingdom, USA, elsewhere. I have listed only a few here. Uh, there is, a, I'm sure, there are many other universities and colleges who offer this. Just for your uh, understanding, I am masters in structures. I have not done marine structures, any ocean engineering or coastal engineering, anything purely marine structures. I worked on industrial structures for six years. Then I went to Gulf, and then I started working in marine structures field. I gained experience and then fall in love with this particular field and then I stuck to this field. It's a fantastic field and if you are analytical, you have good skills on the structures and if you want to try something new and one of the most important thing, it's a very well paid job. Uh, if, you, if you establish yourself and if you can do reasonably good work, you are very well paid. It's a specialized job. Not, it's not easy to find marine structures engineers uh, on the earth. I know building design engineers, roadways, highways, there are many, many people. But you go and ask a marine structures engineer, they are special. And you need special skills. So for special skills, special pay. I hope that interests you. And then I listed some of the organizations who hire you if you have marine experience. This is not a complete list. This is just a very small list. Um, some of them, uh, because I'm not in India, again, I'm not familiar with organization in India, so I try to take some of them. There are consultants and port authorities. Uh, on the top list, Jacobs, yes, we do hire. We hire marine engineers. We hire, we don't marine people. We don't ex expertise. We are recruiting. Uh, then Royal Asconing, uh, which is again in India. They have a branch in Mumbai, and I also heard they have a branch in uh, Delhi. I'm not sure. They have Delhi or in Noida. Then Kovi, it's a Danish consultant company in Chennai. Acom, uh, I know they are present in Delhi. They are a very big organization. They are doing some naval ports and base, naval bases for our Indian military in uh, Karnataka. Worldly persons, their presence I heard in uh, Chennai and uh, Hyderabad. Mount McDonald, then port authorities, all port authorities, for example. JNPT, then if you come to Middle East, Qatar Petroleum, Saudi Aramco, then um, Delta Marine. Hatch from Australia and GHD again from Australia. These are some of the consultants. I'm sure there is a much more exhaustive list. But many of these companies are present in India. So you can go to their website and then find out more information. Contractors who hire in India are Afghans. Uh, they have done many projects in uh, uh, UAE and in the Middle East, Lawson and Tobro. HCC, uh, Sixco, Archeodon Construction, which is a Greek marine based contracting company. CCC, a continental contracting company. Then there are a few other companies like China Harbor, a Chinese-based huge company, Oskalis. Then there is Dredging International, which is widely present in India. Uh, then we call what we call as an Andinal, uh, then Huta Marine. These are some of the main contractors who hire people with expertise in marine structures. Um, I hope this list is useful, but obviously you can always go and explore, and I am happy to guide. And what are the roles you are going to do? You know, okay, that's all good. But what is the work I'm going to do? See, many times 
we enter into a particular field without knowing what actually i'm going to do you know and then maybe you will you will get frustrated after some time oh god where i am you know this is not my field maybe i should have taken something else so i thought i should tell you what are the types of uh, works you will be doing and your titles and designation the very first one is a marine structural engineer what i am a marine structural engineer where you will do lots of all these marine structures design then a coastal engineer where you will do breakwaters you will do structures design for waves uh, current so you are more uh, linked with flood protection structures scour protection erosion protection flood defense this is a coastal engineer then port planning engineer where you plan the ports you know there is an existing port but you have to expand the facilities because you want to bring more cargo or ship more cargo and so it's overall planning it is like planning of a town town planning same way port planning then the operations and yard facilities inside the port so you can be a port operations engineer or a yard facilities engineer then the port infrastructure design when i say infrastructure it includes each port has an associated facilities required you need warehouses for storing you need substations for power you need uh, all the wet utilities you need fire fighting you need uh, power um, then you need water uh, you need compressed air lots of infrastructure facilities you know sewage treatment plants so port infrastructure then if you are a bridge engineer you can again become a marine engineer because end of the day a marine structure is also like a bridge in water then you can be into project engineering and management uh, you can be a marine geotechnical engineer because lots of geotechnical engineers on the land when they deal the soils and the challenges they deal is different to a geotechnical engineer who works in a, a marine field a dredging specialist is a, again a huge science dredging itself is a very big science uh, it's not uh, very easy like dredging can be uh, quite an expensive item so that's again is a very uh, i would say a challenging portion of the career then sea water intake and outfalls where we we use sea water for various purposes the intake and outfall structures and some of the roles is a numerical modeling specialist here when i say numerical modeling is like you model the waves winds and current or sea water and then see how the sea water dynamics how the water moves and how it hits the structure how it erodes the beach and how much is the dynamics wave dynamics whether a vessel can come in or go whether a vessel can stay whether you can operate this is called as numerical modeling and then the navigational study i have shown you earlier how a ship is brought inside turns and it berths and the simulation a mooring analysis where you study how the ship is moored then the waterfront development like the resorts in maldives and pleasure hotels uh, some of the resorts in goa and then you can be a site engineer all the, supervising the construction of all or a contracts engineer who is managing the contracts and talking to various people stakeholders contractors so these are some of the career opportunities the list is exhaustive you know i can add another 50 to this list um, but these are some of the fields which i am familiar with uh, and i am sure there are many other fields and maritime industry and the maritime structures they bring lot of uh, say uh, opportunities for people to work creates job opportunities as well uh um, so let us go and design these marine structures maritime structures and build them build our career and enjoy i hope this was an interesting presentation with that i finish my presentation and more than happy to answer any questions uh professor pradeep yes yes sir okay uh, will you please ask to them uh, if you if you if they have any questions or query right uh, so dear students uh, so i would first like to thank you for this uh, wonderful presentation it was a really challenging uh, area when we all saw the uh, slides and we were all into the zone of modeling and everything but it was a really big and a very new topic that even the professors could uh, gather information for and i would like to extend uh, the podium open to all the students to ask the questions if they have got any So, if the students have got any simple question or a very uh, complicated question, please kindly ask the uh, expert uh, because he will be really very happy to answer to all of your questions. Yeah. Also, anyone can uh, even the faculty also can ask the questions. Anybody can ask, and if you are not able to ask these questions and you get doubts later on, you can send me uh, through uh, Professor Ashutosh. I can answer them. More than happy, or um, we can talk now also as well. It's our way. Who is going to ask me?
So anybody, uh, any faculty is having any questions uh, to uh, move forward with? So I would like to extend one question. Yep, please. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, as you have, uh, as you had stated in the career at the end of the slides that uh, uh, the, the students can definitely join this uh, as a challenging area to work in the area of civil engineering. So the question that I think most of the students would, uh, uh, the question that would haunt more of most of the students would be that uh, even even if they clear uh, MTech in structural engineering, uh, can they do they need a specialization in marine engineering as you stated from IIT Chennai or you know those NIT Suratkal courses, or you just have to be an MTech structural engineer and you can start pursuing a career in this uh, in, in this area of uh, marine engineering. Um. See, as I stated, I got masters in structures, normal structures, no marine structure specialization. So the very first line I said is bachelor's degree in civil engineering. If you have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering, you can become a marine structures engineer, maritime structures engineer. You don't need any other qualifications, but you should be willing to learn and apply the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So because see, whichever field we go, even after I do marine structures, if I go and if I have to go and do a bridge design or a building design at first, First one or two years, I'll be learning. Somebody has to guide me. You know, all the young engineers, we need to learn. So Great. it is learning process. So I, what I want to say to students, you don't have to be a, a MTech in marine structures or MTech in uh, some other specialization. But if you, you should have the right attitude uh, to learn, and then that will take you forward. And in any field, if you have right attitude and hard work, you will go much more uh, forward in your career. Uh, okay, there will be initially say first one or two years, you will struggle a bit here because the terms and science used is different. But people are not expecting that from you. you no, know, you join, but you should have your basic basics, right? Like you have your basic civil engineering knowledge, that should be there. You have to use it and apply it uh, to do other designs. Mm -hmm. Marine is a very simple field. It's not as complicated as it looks. And I'm sure anyone who enters it, they will enjoy it. They will love it. Uh, thank you. I've not seen a marine. I've yeah. not seen a marine structures engineer in my entire career who has started marine structures, quit that and went and joined some other career. Okay. Quite rare. So uh, this will be really a big uh, boost to all the budding civil engineers at BIT, I think, because they would now be wanting to go into this field more often. Uh, so over to Professor Ramikar, I think the students, in case if they have got any queries, will be passing you the uh, details from the export and uh, you can definitely ask a few questions if you have got in the coming future. Uh, so, sir, I think, I think uh, there is a question from uh, Paradis students, Vishal Bhingari. Uh, he is asking, sir, sir, as you uh, show a case study, where do you, uh, where you done dredging of expansion of that port, what the difficulties you faced while managing dredging work? Okay, uh, it's a very good question, I should say. Uh, see, when you do dredging in the sea, you have the ground conditions, which are the most challenging ones. You know, you, you can, maybe the ground is a soft soil or a medium dense sand, or the ground is a hard rock. You know, that itself is a very simple and very straightforward challenge. If you have to do dredging in rock, then you have to bring special dredging equipment like dredging cutter section dredgers, or sometimes you might even have to do blasting. Okay. Because this port is close to a mountain and naturally the mountain geology goes down below the sea. Some hard rock was found. So they had to bring special dredging equipment. That is one. And the other one is it is an open sea. So you can face a wave event during the dredging operation. So you have to stop operations. So you have to cancel that in your pricing. So you assume that you can finish dredging in six months, but sea is rough. There are wave events. There are mini cyclones. So instead of six months, it can go to nine months. So your demerage charges of your equipment and the cost of people and the safety of the people, all these things were some of the challenges faced. And it's a very good question. I think uh, Professor Furke wants to ask something. Arishan, sir, okay, please. Uh, Arishan, sir, are you there? Hello? Yeah. Yes. Uh, do you want to ask something? Uh, no, sir, there's no question. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 
actually uh, i think students uh, uh, are not asking the question probably the students must be interested job point of view okay as you said that the uh, bachelor's degree is enough so i just uh, out of curiosity i just want to ask whether the fresh engineers are uh, uh, recruited here or they need some kind of uh, some kind of experience or something like that uh no we do have freshers okay it is not uh, sometimes what we do is in the final year engineering students we give internship okay for example the dubai office hires people from uh, uk universities okay that's how it has been okay uh, so we every year we hire two to three students from uh, university from uk they come here they work for uh, uh, six months to one year while they are finishing their third year itself after they finish third year they come here do one year internship they are paid some salary and then they go back and they do their final year that is allowed in their universities here sometimes people finish their final year they come and do one year internship when we say internship they are like it is like a job only they are paid so we hire some <laughs> some students from uk uh, here similarly we are also exploring the possibilities of hiring students in india because we have jacobs office in mumbai uh, so uh, this there is a thought process which is going on and yes i can see in future uh, hiring some of the young engineers so initially first one year or six months they will be hired and trained and after that it's usual work uh, sir one more question is there uh, actually it is just in query uh, uh, third year students wants to ask you uh, sir uh, do you ever done a project of marine airports if yes we will glad to hear you about that uh, <coughs> sorry when he says marine airport like a port within um, sea Yes, uh, what like is like airport? See, for example, I wouldn't say like an airport. Um, yes, like we have some parking facilities for what we call as seaplanes. You might have seen some of those James Bond Hollywood movies where you know people come in a small uh, seaplanes and then the plane runs in the water and then it comes to a small harbor and parks there. So those those type of facilities, yes, we are currently doing one uh, in Saudi Arabia. It's not a port, but it is a facility. i would say a facility and in some locations where the airport is very close to sea we have designed some uh, what some facilities which will you know which will allow the planes to uh, take off and land for example if the landing is very close to water and they can't avoid it so we provide some approach lighting structures which will support the approach lightings you know there are done in piers or uh, piles within the water they support support these lighting so that it will facilitate the plane to come and land uh, if you come to dubai there is one very interesting structure we have designed which is called as uh, dubai sky dive okay so the sky dive is like it's a again a marine a jetty type of structure where you have a sea plane you enter the plane it will take you into the space from there you do the diving sky diving i'm sure all of you know sky diving like in zindagi na milegi dubara rithik roshan and his friends they have done the sky diving that type of structures yes sir yes sir thank you and uh, uh, a query is there from third year students also um, sir what is the main difference between the marine engineering and ocean engineering uh okay you can um, it depends marine or ocean you know, they are actually the there are terms which are uh, mixed and used for the same purpose sometime but ocean when you say ocean engineering it's more into offshore structures which i have shown earlier like the oil rigs deep water structures when i say deep water means very deep in the ocean where you use for oil rigs and all those things and also use for wind power generations where you install uh, special uh, power generating units in the deep sea ocean study is uh, it's a part of marine maritime structures design because you have waves which are in the deep ocean and they travel from there to the land so they are linked you know you cannot separate them they are linked because deep water waves uh, maybe a 10 meter wave by the time it hits your shore maybe it is a 3 meter wave so you have to study that so that is part of the numerical modeling one of the carriers which i highlighted where you take the deep water waves and then you pass them and you run them how they reach the shore and then you study the effect on shore structures okay. yes sir yes sir uh, i think that is a course offered by iit chennai ocean ocean engineering Mm -hmm. uh sir uh, a question is there how the residential building on palm island are guarded or protected in seismic situation okay um 
the seismic situation design is same like any other design the only difference here is see in the palm island we have done artificial reclamation and then the buildings are founded on those reclamation so it is like building is sitting on ground alternatively a building can sit a water villa if you see if you go to maldives where the water villa is sitting on piles floating okay it is sitting on piles so for seismic design it is very similar to a normal seismic design of a building structure but you have one other factor what we call as seismic hydrodynamic forces where the adjacent water because of its dynamics due to a seismic event can come and hit the structure so apart from seismic mass vibrating and causing forces on the structure you also have the water okay like for example you take the sumatra indonesia seismic event the seismic event has triggered waves that wave has come and hit the coast of sri lanka and india so that wave forces that waves they are consequence of seismic events so when we have buildings and structures inside a palm island or anywhere we also have to review the effect of seismic generated mass generated forces as well as the water generated forces so they are designed for those okay sir thank you yes uh, sir last question is there uh, what is the effect of high velocity wind or sand storm on marine structure in dubai okay okay sand storm actually i wouldn't um, i would consider more from a maintenance perspective okay a sand storm means you know you have a lot of sand flowing in the air so it will go and get deposited around various structures so it can cause operational problems you know moving of equipment cleaning of the structure or it can go and stick to suppose you are uh, transporting a product say for example a bauxite you are you are loading bauxite onto the ship and bauxite it is like an open conveyor okay so the sand storm sand can go and get deposited on top of it okay so it is more of cleaning issue and more of maintenance issue than actually structural issue that is for the sand storm for the wind the waves are generated by the wind so wind has direct effect on the waves and current that's how we take into effect so we take the wave loadings on the structure the waves are generated by wind they are generated by current and gravitational forces and then wind directly acting on the structure we for wind forces like any other structure you do you know the wind forces you calculate what is the basic wind speed what is the terrain category what is the height of the structure and all those things we take into the design but that's an interesting question yes sir yes sir thank you thank you uh, so uh, now i request to professor harshit farke sir to just deliver the vote of thanks thank you sir uh, sir on behalf of bajaj institute of technology and the entire civil engineering department i professor farke would like to extend a very hearty vote of thanks to everyone present here a big thank you to mr chandrashekhar gamri who despite of his very busy schedule uh, agreed to deliver a talk to all the students sir your talk on this uh, topic uh, was really inspirational and i am sure many of the students will consider this as a career option in the future and we would be more than honored if we can have more such talks in the future um next i would also like to thank our honorable principal dr kani for his uh, constant support and encouragement i would also like to thank our head of department dr mahajan for his continuous guidance and i can't uh, thank less uh, professor dabli without whom uh, this lecture would not have been possible and last but not the least uh, thank you to all the students and the organizing team for conducting such a wonderful event thank you everyone thank you sir thank you everyone and i would like to take this opportunity to thank the principal and all the faculty of um, uh, your organization and i am really uh, privileged to give this presentation and thanks to all the students who patiently listened to this i hope i did not make them sleep uh, thank you ashutosh thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm logging off. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes.